In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, we're told to not love the world. We're told do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is what? Not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Now there we go. The desires of the appetites of the flesh. All that's in there. The lust of the eyes. Oh, I see, I want. And the boastful pride of life. The look what I have done. That's life. I graduated sumu sumu cum laude. Right? All of these things are from the world. They're not from God. They're not from God. They're not for us. That's what he says. You see, the world hates God. The world hates the true God. The world itself and system is opposed to God. In verse 17, he says, The world is passing away and its desires are going to pass away. But the one who does the will of God does what? He abides forever. Second thing we see is, is quite logical. The world hates God. The world hated his Christ, the Messiah, the God in the flesh. If they hated the Father, they certainly would hate the Son. Jesus said that. Isn't it interesting? John 17, 14, he says, I have given them thy word and the world has hated them. Christ gave us in this tremendous prayer an insight into the mind of God Almighty. The, the, the insight into him in John 17 is, I, I never get tired of reading John 17. It just always moves me to think of how God thinks and to be, invo and to be basically invited into that conversation. And I relive it. The world hated them because they're not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Think of what they did with Christ. Crucify him, they said. Flog him. Put him down, spit in his face, reject him. That's what Christ found. And those who know Christ are going to find the same response. He says, because the world hated our Christ, they'll hate us. That's why the next one's just logical too. The world hates those who belong to Christ. It's interesting in here, in John 17, earlier in the passage, it says, even as thou gavest authority over all mankind and to all that thou hast given, he may give eternal life. You see, eternal life is what takes you out of the world and eternal life puts you in the kingdom of God. When you are not in Christ, you don't know Christ, you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, you're in the world. And that's all there is. That's all you, the hope you can have. That's where we all started. That's where, I mean, I remember it vividly to this day, what it was like to live in that world. But I also remember when I heard the gospel that Christ died for me, that he paid for my sins, that he offered me eternal life, total forgiveness, and he clothed me with his righteousness. He gave me a real life, and that life is eternal, and it was designed to live with him forever in his home and with his, at his home. And that's what he offers to all of us, to belong to Christ. And he said, this is eternal life. Verse 3, that they may know thee, the only true God. The only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You see, if you know Christ, you have eternal life. If you put your faith in Christ, you know the true God. And, and John, by the way, it's very important to see why that hate is carried over into his, to his children, the, the people you that know Christ. He says, we're his children now. We're his children now. We're more than just citizens. We have a citizenship that's based on a relationship with the king. We're his children. And he says in John, 1 John 3, 1, See how great a love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God, and such we are. And then notice this, folks. Look at that. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time we've had to look at a few moments in your word. And Lord, I know I've been primarily speaking to those who have already been born again, who are children of God. They've trusted you, Lord, as their Savior, and they have that wonderful gift of eternal life. But right now, Father, maybe there's some here that haven't done that yet. It's real possible. So right now, where you are, 
And Father, where they're thinking about these things, I pray, Lord, that you would help them to understand your great love for them. How you went and took on flesh and provided a rescue mission just for them. But it cost you everything. It cost you the life of your son to rescue each person who is brought into your kingdom.